Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Anderson Acres. Yeah, it's a snowy, blustery November day. At least it stopped actively snowing. But that's what it is here in Canada at this time of year. It can be kind of fantastic. Today's Loki's day out, so she's the one bouncing around the bunny paradise. It's not nice out today, but we're not talking about bunnies today. She's just having a fine old time, but we're not talking about bunnies today. No, no, no. I had a question from the video I did yesterday, actually, about I did, was showing my log book, and someone asked me, so you show your chickens? How do you do that? How does that work? Well, it's actually not that complicated. Shadowfax heard me. I'm going to go hang out with them. But uh, it's actually not that complicated as long as you have shows in your area. Most areas do. We don't have a ton because we kind of live in the middle of nowhere. I'm just going to hi Shadow Fast. Let me check on the chickens. We can take a look at some of our chickens. Now I've only shown silky chickens. Okay, I haven't shown anything else. I might show Coronation Sussex next year. Maybe because wherever he is, big guy or Lorenzo, he's actually really quite fantastic. So I'm gonna go check on the goats. So poultry shows are some of my favorite places to be. Okay, there are so many birds, they're all beautiful, all personable, they're so clean and lovely. They just look so much better. Sorry, I'm picking up strings from my hay bales. But they look so much better in the shows than they do in your barnyard because when you're taking your chickens to shows like I have to clean my chickens before we go they get a bath they get all spiffed up everybody looks fantastic hi Lily I see you baby I know I know it's a terrible life even though you're fine yeah you're fine too oh but as enchanting as poultry shows can be, and I do find them enchanting, they can be overwhelming if you're not used to it. There can be thousands of birds. We have smaller shows where I am because we're kind of in the middle of nowhere, but it's still, there's hundreds of birds at our shows. <laughs> you might have thousands of birds. I'm just gonna go on the outside of the pen and walk around, check my fences while I talk to you about poultry shows. No, shadow facts. <laughs> Sorry, he's trying to get out. I know, Lily. You have, you're fine. You have pumpkins, you have hay, you're fine. Anyway, <laughs> so there can be thousands of breed, uh, thousands of chickens, hundreds of breeds, each with their own varieties, dozens of abbreviations to learn, and guys and girls wandering around with white coats and clipboards. It can actually be kind of confusing if you've never been there before. So if you're interested in showing chickens, you have to familiarize yourself with poultry exhibitions long before you enter your own birds. Attend various shows in your area and you'll start to understand how they work. You'll also be able to network with other chicken people. I'm going this way because I'm sticking. But um, you'll discover some fascinating breeds you might have not seen before and you can ask questions of people who raise really quality birds. I'm going this way. It's a worthwhile experience. Even if you're not going to show your chickens, you can absolutely go to a few shows and learn a little bit. State and county fairs will have the most variety, but don't discount shows that are hosted by your local poultry clubs. Okay, state fairs, absolutely the best places to go if you're in the States, but smaller poultry shows can have a lot of really interesting animals as well. Depending on who is sponsoring the local shows, you might see large fowls, bantams, guinea fowl, turkeys, ducks, geese. Once in a while, you'll even see quail. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things when we see quail at the shows. That's always awesome. 4-H um, shows will often show quail. But we're not talking about quail today. We're talking about chicken shows. That's Slate. He's actually looking so fantastic in the winter. He stopped molting and his coat has come in beautifully. So he's looking quite snazzy these days. Snazzy Slate and Princess Orange. <laughs> Camera hog. 
anyway, <laughs> uh, quail and pigeons aren't really poultry, but there is a st and there isn't really a standard of perfection for them, but they're fun to see at shows anyway. They can be a lot of fun to see at the shows. Most shows happen in the spring and fall. Where I am, all of your shows happen in the spring and fall. There are nothing in the summer, nothing in the winter. But that's okay, I'm just picking up some horse brushes. I don't know why they're on the ground. I suspect Shadowfax has been up to nonsense. Anyway, <laughs> um, my area doesn't have winter shows at all. Mostly because, or summer shows. Mostly because transporting birds in the winter sucks and it also sucks in the summer. <laughs> okay, so most areas suspend shows when it's really hot or when it's really cold. Goats are going to go back into their barn. They're not super fond of snow. <laughs> They're bailing. <laughs> They're bailing and a chicken is coming out of there. Anyway. <laughs> so when attending shows, dress for the weather. Okay, because they don't care. If they've scheduled it for October 15th and October 15th turns out to be a blizzard, they're doing it anyway. <laughs> At least in my experience. They don't care, especially where I am. So I'm just picking up things like rakes and that so we don't lose them in the snow here. But uh, especially where I am, it's really important that they hold the shows when they say they do because the weather only gets worse as the fall goes on. So yeah, be prepared for bad weather the show will still go on. I mean, unless the roads are closed, it's still going to happen. Um, make sure you wear clothes that you don't mind getting dirty because you will get dirty. Okay, as much as everyone tries, you're going to get dirty. After the show, you want to disinfect your hands and your shoes before going home to your own flock. I'm just checking my fences if you're wondering what I'm doing. Um, you don't want to bring home some diseases, so clean your hands, clean your shoes. It's never worth making your own flock ill. If you're going to the poultry show for the first time, hi buddy, you might want to bring a camera, a pen, and a paper, or at least your smartphone. It works well, but you do need something to take notes and take some pictures. Yeah, most shows last an entire day. Larger shows may last a couple of days. Be prepared, bring a little bit of cash. <laughs> So most clubs will be selling food, drinks, crafts to raise money or support the local poultry organizations. And most of them need cash. Yeah, the goats are hiding in the barn. They don't like winter. Too bad, guys. It's only November. You got till March. <laughs> we have long winters here. So unless you have a really keen eye, poultry shows might seem like an endless parade of identical chickens being handled by strange people in white coats. But the judges do have discerning eyes and they've done this before. Each breed has a specific standard of perfection, an SOP. Each judge refers to that standard of perfection. Just checking out fencing in our hay barn here. All right, we're okay. So judges refer back to that standard of perfection. Each judge does check that. So if you're going to breed show quality birds, you need a copy of that because that's what they're judging based on. It's not some pie in the sky, ooh, I like this chicken better. There are actually standards that they're following. So if you're going to have show chickens, get your hands on the official SOP right away. Once you get one, you'll start seeing how the chickens are judged. They're divided into classes. The six classes are American, Asiatic, Continental, English, Mediterranean, and the any other standard breed, AOSB for short. Yeah, there's a lot of abbreviations to learn. So <laughs> there's a lot of them. You have to get really familiar with chicken shows before you have to stop looking up abbreviations. I'm always looking them up and I've been doing it a while. So each breed within each class has a written standard and that's the standard all breeders are looking for. Kissing cameras. Aw, oh, don't make a mess. Freaky. <laughs> He's making a mess. So the standard of perfection really is what you want. Like, she doesn't meet the standard of perfection. I'm breeding her anyway because I like the feathers. But I can't show her because she's a silky, but look at those feathers. She's a uh, frizzled silky. Frizzled silky don't technically meet the standard of perfection. I can't show her. That one's a little freak. I can't show that one either, but that one's weird. I don't even like that one. I don't know why we kept it. Tristan likes her. 
So these two are not showable. My showable chickens win pretty well, actually. Like Buffman won, I think next year Blackie will win if I enter him. I only entered Buffman in the last show. I don't like entering too many at once. It gets confusing if you enter a whole bunch at once. So opinions don't really matter when it comes to the chicken shows. It's really the standard of perfection. It reigns supreme. So you need it even though you think your chicken might be better. If the other chicken meets the standard of perfection more, they win. That's just the way, the way it is. But which SOP you use depends on which association is sponsoring the show. So check before you enter. Most shows are run by the American Poultry Association, but not all of them. So you want to check. If you're showing bantams and you're at a show sponsored by the American Bantam Association, you do need to know that. Okay, that's really important, especially for me because I show bantams. I need to know which standard we're following so I know which bird to enter. So if you're, if you're at poultry shows, look at the uh, birds before the judges go through. Then look again after they've completed their initial rounds. Take note of the comments left by the judges. That will really help you out. Okay, the comments left by the judges will kind of let you know what they're looking for. You'll be able to kind of start judging your own birds based on... Sorry for the tilting. I'm just picking things up because it snowed and I don't like it. I hate snow. But um, look at the comments. So study their comments. That'll help you understand what judges are looking for. But don't get in the judge's way. That'll make them annoyed. <laughs> okay. Um, most of, a lot of times the areas that the judges are in are taped off anyway. But if not, stay out of the way of the judges. They have a job to do. Do not get in their way. You're just looking. Um, like I said, there's going to be a bunch of abbreviations. I'm going to put them up on the screen here. So you can see some of the abbreviations. It's really important that you understand those abbreviations, but you can just make a list and take the list with you. That's what I do. My list of abbreviations lives in my pocket while I'm at shows because I still don't have them all memorized. It takes a long time to get them all memorized. So yes, you, want, you need to know those abbreviations. No, you don't need to know them by heart. Some people do, I don't, and you don't have to. You can just write them down, stick them in your pocket. <laughs> Pay special attention to any birds marked DQ, meaning they're disqualified. They've been disqualified for a reason. You don't want to enter a, a bird that shares that same trait. Okay, disqualified birds, you want to know why they were disqualified and don't bother showing your birds if they share that trait. So, for example, if I were to enter this one, she'd be disqualified because she does not have traditional silky feathering. She's frizzled. Okay, some people call it sizzled. So she would be disqualified for that reason. So then everyone else would know, well, don't bother showing a bird that has that type of feathering because they're just going to get disqualified anyway. All right, so all you have to do is pay attention to who's disqualified and why. And then you'll know, don't bother showing that bird. A silky with pink skin, they get disqualified pretty quick. Don't show silkies with pink skin. There's really no point. <laughs> anyway, it is actually getting kind of cold out here. So I am going to call it a day and I will talk a little bit more about poultry shows in the next video or two. But right now I'm going in because it's actually really cold. So hopefully you will join us later. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.